Welcome again friends. Uh, in the previous video we have just discussed about the introduction of biostatistics and some terminologies which are required, which will be required in the future videos. And we have seen uh, that there are three different types of data sets we need to deal with. One is the non-frequency type, second one is the frequency type but simpler and third one is the sequency type group data which are the complex type. Okay, now we'll be seeing here in this video uh, the part of the biostatistics. Uh, we'll begin with the calculations, and the calculation we want to do here is called the central tendency. Central tendency, or simply we can write it as averages. Now, when we get our data, a data set, the first thing we want to do with this data set is simply we want to know the averages of that data. And in this case, it is also called central, sorry, central tendency. Central tendency means a data set to fall upon a particular region. Suppose you scatteredly take an examination in a class of 50 students in the class. You take an exam and among the exam, you get uh, in 100 marks of exam, exam you get a few people uh, score at uh, 85, 90 to 80, this score. So very few people and very few people scores like 35, 40, 48 like that. Most of the people score 60, 65, 70. So this is the range. 60 to 70 is the range. Suppose among the 50 students you get 35 students score this. 5 students, students uh, or say 7 students score this. 8 students score this. So among the 50 students, but when you have the distribution of the students, maximum number of students are getting the marks between 60 to 70. So this is called the value inside a population to come at the central part. So if this is the whole marks of 0 to 100, the total mark range or marks range is 0 to 100. Among them, 60 to 70 is somewhere like that. So this is almost the central part of this data set value. Now most of the population tend to give you or tend to fall into this particular central part. Okay, so this is very very important. In most of the cases we are going to find that most of the population are going to be present in this central part of our total data set distribution. This is called central tendency of our data. When we gather the data we have seen many cases there is a central tendency for the population uh, or most of the population. Uh, for, okay. Now in this case, in this central tendency we can also call them the averages, right? We also call these things averages. So you get the 0 to 100 values and 50 students and average means maximum of that and what is the midpoint of that particular value. Now in this case if you have the value is 0 to 100, the average value is approximately 50, we all know that. 0 to 100 the average is the middle which is 50 but in this case it is slightly because in real data it is slight modifications are there because it is not exact like math right because these are real data so that's why it is the difference between the pure mathematical problems and statistics problems because statistics are dealing with real data when we deal with real data the real data can vary because there are influences in the data because they are real people and you have taken the exam of real people so there are different types of influences different type of influences onto the data which change your data from what to be the exact one for in this case the exact data must be 50 but due to some many kind of influences the data set slightly slides to 60 to 70 range okay but still it's a central tendency of our data so what we get the averages of that and in all the type of average we can divide into three different parts one is called the mean or the arithmetic mean so first is mean value which is also called the arithmetic mean value simply the average value second one is median third is mode okay so this is this are the three types of values now we are going to see the different type of uh, examples on that okay we'll be seeing different examples with that okay so let's take a frequency data simple 
uh, non frequency data and look for the examples that we get from this non frequency data which are the easier ones then we'll be seeing the complex type of data which are uh, frequency type and then group type of data now let's say this one okay now let's begin with this one now in all these cases whatever data we are getting for the averages we'll be talking about mean median and mode now what are these three things simply explain by this one example let's say we begin with this they provide us this data says 3 4 minus 1 22 14 0 3 say 18 7 0 and 1 so they provide us this data and they have told us that we need to find the averages of this data or we need to find the central tendency mode of the data whenever they are called as the central tendency we need to look for these three things mean median and mode now this is the data which is a non frequency type it's simple data without any kind of grouping and everything this is very very simple now in this data mean is simply we all know that to provide the average so mean is simply mean the average it's simply average now what he means by average simply we add up all the data so adding all the data so value of all the data divided by or simply I must write it here value of all the data okay value of all the data divided by number of data that are available right simply if, if somebody to tell you that 3 7 8 these three things are there so what is the average you simply uh, simply add all these things and divide them with the number of data which is 3 in this case so similarly in this case so here we will be adding all the data so we will be 3 plus 4 plus 1 so so say this is the data plus 22 plus 14 plus 0 plus 3 18 7 0 1 there is no necessary for writing the zeros uh, I want to show you the whole process that's why I'm writing otherwise there is no uh, way of writing now in this case these are the addition of the value of total data when you get by adding all the data by so you need to divide this value we need to divide it with let me erase this part you need to divide it with our number of data so what is the number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so we'll be dividing it with 11 now what is the total value for that here so let's say 3 plus 4 7 minus 1 because plus minus it will be a minus 1 so my 7 minus 1 is 6 plus 22 28 then 14 28 plus 14 is 42 then 40 uh, 42 plus 3 45 then 7 uh, then 18 45 plus 8 is 53 and 10 63 and 70 and 71 right so here it is 71 divided by 11 so here we get the average value so if we look for the average whatever result comes in so it suppose 60, uh, 66 and then 5 6.4 something that will be the average so this is going to be the average or mean for this particular values so this particular data set okay now second thing what we need to find is median now what do we mean by this median median means is the exact middle range or the midpoint of a data set simply it's the mid range or midpoint of data set first one is simply average value second median means midpoint so we get median which is midpoint we need to find the exact midpoint how we can find the midpoint okay for example say here if they provide only four data say two four nine zero they suppose provide us these four data and they, they have told us to find the midpoint or say three and to find the midpoint to find any kind of median or midpoint try to understand this to find median or midpoint what we need to provide is a sequential data that means a data arranging from lowest to highest or highest to lowest 
otherwise we cannot find a median we cannot find median by haphazardly look the data because the data they are providing us somewhere there is a higher value then lower then again higher lower so they are just totally mixed but what we need to do for getting a median is simply to arrange the data in either lowest to highest or highest to lowest it's important to most of the time uh, provide in the lowest to highest form so let us first arrange this in lowest to highest form simply 0 then 2 then 3 then 4 then 9 once we arrange them from lowest to highest form then what we need to do we need to look for the middle most data and we need to number those data so first step is to arrange them from lowest to highest second step is to mark the data numbering so numbering will be let me take another color so here's the number one two three four five so these are five datas so what will be the middle of these two datas this one third one why because if you take this third one as the middle data its left side contains two right side contains two so it is a balance so that's why you can tell this third one is the is middle most value right clear similarly but if they give us this example say if they give us two nine eight four if they give us this data and they they have told us to find the median for this data again what we need to do we need to arrange them so we'll arrange them two four eight and nine numbering them one two so numbering them with different colors so let us number them with uh, this black color one two three and four now we need to find the middle most if we choose this one as a middle most this sorry this fourth one as a middle most there should be a problem because in the right side there is two left side there is one if we choose this eight one then that will again create a problem because in those cases if we choose this eighth one left side would be two right side would be one we can't distribute something in this odd way for getting a median because to get a median we need to choose the value at the middle where both the sides are the even number of individuals now you have seen here if they give you a number of data which are odd in number say in this case it is 5 which is an odd number then it will be extremely easy for you to calculate the median because you simply you get a middle value and only distribution should be there is equal in both the side as you get the odd value but once you get the even number of data in those cases it will be difficult because in even number of data there, there shouldn't be any central because uh, these they are or even in number so what we need to do instead of taking individually this one or this one we take both the data that are present so we will be taking 4 and 8 and take an average of these two middle data ok so we will take the average so we take 4 and 8 we get average so 2 data by 2 so it will be 6 so then we will tell this yes the median for this even number of data is 6 which is not even in the data set that they are provided I repeat which is not even present in the data set that they are provided why need to do this because once we provide 6 at the middle sorry this one at the middle then what we can tell yes both the direction left and right we are having equal number of data then we call this is a median so for for something to be a median it must be present at the exact middle having similar number of data at right and left so once if we get a odd number it will be easy to calculate if it is an even number value then we need to do a average of the middle two middle most values okay and that average is going to be the median for that value okay so this is what is median calculation all about now in this example what we get we need to arrange the data so 0 will be last again another 0 and another important thing if the data is repeating some value we must include those values number of times that are seen in the data for example say here are zeros in two places so we must place 0 two zeros not one zero so the number of data that will be serve, uh, they'll be telling us we must calculate all the data okay that's another important part so two zeros so sorry uh, this one will be the lowest very sorry so minus value so it's minus one will be the lowest then two zeros so this are over then what we get we get one then we get three two threes are there so we'll be putting through two threes then one four is there so we'll be putting a four then seven is there we're putting a seven 
then 14, then 18, then 22. So these are the data that we get. And the number, so now let's number the data. So if we number the data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you get 11 data which are odd number. So it will be less tedious for us to calculate the median. So what we get for this one, we get the middlemost value. So what is the middlemost value for that? So that we are having the equal number of data both the side. It is 6, 1. Because if we choose the 6, 1, left hand side we are having 5. So we are having 5. Right hand side we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this one is going to be. So the data represented at the 6th position is here 3. So here the median will be 3. So 3 is our median for this type of frequency data. Non-frequency data, 3 is our median. Now let's do the third kind which is called the mode. So third part is a mode. So mode is, what is mode? Mode is the particular data which repeated maximum time in a data set. So the data repeated maximum time in the data set. Here the, this is the mode. So we need to find the mode which is having the maximum frequency. That's correct. Now suppose in this case what we are having, we are having 0 twice, 1 once only, 3 twice. So the mode for this data would be 0 because 0 is having highest frequency because it is repeating twice and also 3 which is also repeating twice but rest of the values are repeating only once so the most common value of the data set is called mode most common value of the data set and here the most common value is so most common value in a data set here it is 3 and 0 so we will write both 3 and 0 is mode for this particular data set Okay, so there are the three things. Simply, this, this is the most common. So let me write most common. So simply mean means average arithmetic mean. Median means which is the exact midpoint of the data set. And mode is the most common value of the data set. Most common data uh, of the data set or which is the most frequent data. Okay, so these are the three different calculations of the central tendency for the non-frequency data or simple data. In the future video, we'll be taking out the frequency data and group data too. Uh, and also we'll be looking at this three type and how to find these three things for those complicated data. Okay, so that's it. And I hope this video is helping you. Thank you.